we hear a lot about having a positive mindset and how that's really important to be able to pursue the things that we want and to experience them. When it comes to spirituality, have you ever wondered, does answered prayer require that I have a positive mindset? Yeah, I've had that question. Guess what? That's what we're going to explore today. So join me as we dig into the soil of this together. Welcome to you, my friend. I am D. Grant Smith, the growth farmer for personal development through the lens of spirituality and storytelling. Here on this channel, we talk about the journey of becoming the best version of ourselves, living our dreams, self-love, inner healing, manifestation, and a whole lot more. If you want more from me, including some awesome stories that will bless your life and inspire you in new ways and shine a new light on your own personal journey, I invite you to check out all that I have available for you at growthfarming.com. What's also on the site is courses, coaching, and a fantastically dynamic and beautiful community of people who are all coming together, doing exactly what it is that we're talking about in these videos, and that is becoming the best version of ourselves and supporting ourselves and each other in this process. So, today, have you ever wondered if answered prayer isn't just a matter of faith, but also a matter of having a positive mindset? Or is it about connecting with God in a way that maybe even religion doesn't fully understand? Let's dig into this together. What is the key to prayer that actually works, actually gets God to not only listen to us, but to answer us? Or even more, is there a way that we can pray that will maybe even guarantee that what we ask for will actually be given to us? All of us have asked these questions at some point, whether we've used those words or not. And usually, after we pray desperately for God to show up and help us, and it seems like we're talking to ourselves, or we're talking to a wall, or we're talking to nothing. Why is that? Are there times when something really challenging is going on, or maybe even painful is happening in our lives, and it just feels like the whole world is turned against us? So what do we do? We turn to God for help. And God is there to help, but not necessarily always in the way that we think he, she, or it will be. Now, I'm not super big on changing my pronoun game, but I recognize that God doesn't necessarily have a gender. So that's why I went down that road. Anyhow, let's just call God this, the divine. The divine is full of surprises. And one of them is that all of our experiences, both what we consider to be good when we consider to be not good or bad, inside of both of these and everything in between are opportunities given to us for us to see who we are ourselves, divinely, always connected to all that is. Because guess what? All that is, is God. Here's something for you to consider. Since we come from all that is, God is already alive, active, and at work within us. We are all in the process of evolution, of waking up to our truest identity. And that's why prayer isn't a begging and a pleading and just an asking for things that we don't feel like we have or that we want. Prayer is really a conversation. And it's actually more of a conversation than just a supplication for our needs being met. And this conversation happens through our inner dialogue, our imagination, what we believe to be true. That's right. The inner dialogue with your highest self isn't an imaginary friend that you've made up and sometimes hear from or you imagine yourself to hear from, but actually it's a very real friend. When you hear God speaking to you, do you ever wonder if you're really hearing from the divine? If so, you're in good company, my friend. Maybe you've heard of this book. I've been rereading it. And actually, I got it on Audible. I got all three volumes. There's three of these guys. Uh, Book one, book two, and book three. I got all of them on Audible, and I'm about three and a half hours into the whole thing. But it's a book called Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. And I'm talking about this book a whole lot more because actually a lot of the things that 
God shares with Neil in conversations with God is exactly what Neville Goddard talks about, what Joe Dispenza talks about, what Abraham Hicks talks about, what so many other people that I've been reading about talk about. What Neil Donald Walsh did was he had this magnificent and amazing conversation with God that resulted in, once again, three volumes of this book. And it actually, the whole thing didn't begin as a conversation. It began as a rant that he was having. A bunch of griping and venting and complaining about how terrible he felt like his life was. Because at the time, he was going through a rather very challenging and difficult time. But after he wrote down all of his thoughts and was really just getting everything out and all of his frustration and his anger at God, that's who it was all directed to, he started to hear something. And he wondered if this inner dialogue, if this response that he was getting was actually God speaking or if it was just his imagination. But it's interesting because God's response to him was really telling. It's very similar to what another of my favorite teachers, once again, repeats throughout all of his books, and that is Neville Goddard. In exploring the capacities of imagination, it's not only bringing the seen into the unseen and to create new things, it's also one of the avenues that God communicates with us. But how can we know that we're really hearing God and not something else? Well, it's a matter of clarity. One of the things that God tells Neil inside the book is, when you hear from me, you'll know it's me because it will be your highest thought, your most clearly communicated message. Now, oftentimes we have lots of thoughts streaming all through our heads all the time. A lot of these thoughts are not necessarily clear. And they certainly don't elevate us to a place where we know that we're feeling something that is our highest vibration. But when we do have those kinds of dialogues and interactions with something within us that is more clear than we've ever been before, and also operating at such a high vibrational frequency, that's when we know that it's God. All that is, is infinite, abundant, and lacks nothing. Guess what? That is our truest essence. That is our real identity. All the things that we associate with us that we think are attached to suffering and struggle and pain and discomfort and uncertainty and lack and scarcity, that's not our true nature. Those are identities and stories that we have either absorbed or adopted or taken on as true and then made it a part of our identity. So much of what it is that we have the opportunity to do through the conversation we get to have with God is remember who it is that we really are. You, my friend, like me, were conditioned from a very young age to believe in our dependence upon other things and other people in order for us to feel whole, complete, and taken care of, which cultivates, ultimately, a codependency in so many areas of our lives, and it keeps the truth about who we really are hidden from us. Yet, through the power of our imagination, we can harmonize or in some cases, actually reharmonize and reutilize the infinite dynamics of who we really are. And that is, we are pieces of the divine who actually lack nothing. And this is so much more than positive thinking. If you thought that I was never going to come back to that subject, since that's what this whole video is about, rest assured, let's dig into it right now. This isn't about positive thinking. This is about tapping into the infiniteness of unconditioned consciousness. That's where and who God is. That is where we came from, a.k.a. that is the source. Removing the conditions that we place on ourselves, that we place on our value, that we place on our worth, what we think or believe is or isn't possible, and removing all the judgments that we make about everything, that's how we evolve through this process of transformation. It's not just about thinking positive thoughts. It's about accessing and operating from our highest thought that brings us into harmony with the divine and brings our conversations of gratitude, aka our prayers, into being. Because the real way to pray is to be thankful for having already received what it is that we've asked for. Prayer and faith, that's the conversation with God. And it's that faith 
that we are having, that we are placing, where we believe what we've asked for is already here. Because it is. We've seen it in our imagination. And if we will persist in the belief, persist in the story, and believing in the story, and adapting and adopting that story as true, also known as our self-concept, God will bring that to us in ways that we couldn't even imagine being possible. The how is not up to us. What is up to us is A, to know who we really are, and that is a piece of God, and B, to believe that we already are and already have all of the love that has been promised to us. Will you pray like this? Will you join me in changing your story, in changing the way that you go about having conversations with God? If you want help with this and to be a part of an awesome dynamic community of people that are doing this together each and every week, I host a harvest meeting on Mondays and it's exclusive for members of my Harvest Vineyard membership group at growthfarming.com. I'll put a link down in the description box below for you to check that out. And I invite you to join us. Hey, I appreciate you. If you haven't done so already, give this video a thumbs up, a comment, and share it with somebody to bless them. Thank you very much for being here. I love you. I believe in you. And I'll see you again very soon.